Welcome to another edition of Thorough Black Talk with your sister Keisha, your brother Tad, and your brother Ashe SJ. We'll be joining us in a bit, along with our regular guests, Sister Marcia and Brother Blacksmith will also be joining us a little later, trying to work out some kinks behind the scenes. But of course, we are ready to rock and roll. I am honored and humbled to have with us this evening um, Professor Baina Bello will be joining us um, shortly as well. Uh, we have a lot to discuss. A lot has happened um, in the time that we've been off. Um, I want to hear from all of you. How did you enjoy your time with your family? Uh, for those of you who spent time with your family, let us know, you know, what that experience was about. Um, of course, we don't um, celebrate anything uh, such as Thanksgiving Day, but we do celebrate uh, celebrate Black Family Day. So, of course, it's always good to be with your loved ones whenever you can. Um, the world is moving at a rapid pace, and uh, oftentimes it's hard to catch up. So, um, whenever you can spend some time with your loved ones, that's always a good thing. And so um, I hope that you took advantage of that time. Also, um, I hope that you all are in the best of health, uh, mentally, uh, spiritually, and physically. Um, you know, in these critical times, so many of us are ill mentally and physically. And so you always want to be your best. Um, take some time to um, be with yourself. Also, um, I'm finding out that, you know, a lot of people have trouble being with themselves. You know, it's difficult for some people today just to be still and be one with yourself, especially as you, as we come to the close of a new year, um, excuse me, a close of 2022, looking forward to a new year. And you always want to have, um, your mind and your body and your spirit in its proper place. And so I hope that all of you would take some time to do that. Figure out what you need for yourself. Figure out what you need for, you know, your mental. Um, I was just reading the other day um, in the news, a 10-year-old child murdered his mother um, for um, a video game headset. Um, so we're living in critical times right now. So it's very, very important that we stay in tune with who we are, being that this world is moving so rapidly and, you know, everything is thrown at us so much. Um, you know, a lot of people 
um, really can't grasp um, a sense of time for themselves, you know, because you want to be in the know, you want to know what's happening, you want to know what's going on, but you have to be able to slow down the mind and slow down the body so that you can take all of it in and process it and, you know, grow within the space that you're in. Um, so I will wish all of that for all of you um, and continue to keep that um, in the back of your mind as we come to a close of 2022. Because from what I'm reading and, you know, just what my instincts are telling me, um, 2023 is going to be serious hell for a lot of people. There are a lot of companies that are laying people off. Um, we have to discuss some of that um, in the coming weeks. There are um, a lot of countries where there are major, major protests that are taking place around the world. Um, we talk about China here often on, on this platform and what's happening there. And we already alerted you all to, you know, the major protests that are happening there. Um, there is talk of war in Pakistan. Um, there, were talk, there was talk of an economic collapse with said uh, professionals, but um, it's nothing new. Um, we just have to learn how to readjust. And in order to do that, you have to be clear in mind. Um, so again, as we come to a close of 2022, we're going to have some very interesting guests for you all that are going to be coming on um, in the coming weeks. We got to get the history hitman in here. We got a uh, plant base. Uh, Brother Tony, Sister Ariel, um, coming in um, the last week of this month, you know, to give us some, you know, proper eating and, you know, um, nutritional techniques that can be beneficial to all of us, all of us. So I'm excited to have them on as well. Um, I want to give a shout out, shout out to Aunt Marie. What's up, Aunt Marie? I know Uncle Jess in the background. I hope PZ is in the background. I hope everybody's doing well. You know, I love you to life. You know, sometimes you have to be thankful of the elders that you have in your family. And I'm definitely appreciative of my aunts and uncles. You know, some people you can't um, become one with in your family. But, you know, and that's unfortunate. And I say that all the time. But I am thankful that I'm okay in that arena. So um, shout out to Sister Joyce and Brother Monty on the check-in. Love y'all to life always. Um, sis, good to have you black again with us. We definitely appreciate you tuning in. Thank you, Sister Joyce. Of course, you can get these hats at FMP Accessories at fmpaccessories.com. Um, if you missed it, I posted it on the Thorough Black Talk page. They had a Black Friday 50% off sale. So a lot of fedoras, believe it or not, were like $9. So you could have racked up. So I hope some of you did uh, chop up over there and get you some hats. Um, I like to promote black businesses as we do here. Peace and greetings to you, Sister Miriam. All the best to you and your Sister Marie on a check-in. Be more in the building. What's good? I like the, I like the music videos. And of course... You know, I think you're going to like um, a new aspect we're going to add to the show um, in the coming years. Uh, come, excuse me, coming in 2023. Um, just historical musical facts um, that I think that our people should know. Oftentimes we say it's, 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 it's good to know, you know, the known figures in history but it's more critical to understand and know the architects of history. And so tonight we got a quick question for you all, a trivia question, and I hope that you all will enjoy that segment with us and hopefully we can keep this going um, in 2023. Abibi Fahodia, Sister Fonessa on the check-in. On the check-in. You know, I don't know if you heard, but allegedly Doge will be the currency of Twitter going forward. So hope people held on to a, a little bit of that. And if you haven't, we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> and she said, yes, Uncle Jess. You know, my Uncle Jesse is hilarious. He cracks me up for real, for real. Love him to life. Um, 
Wow, wow. I hope you feel better, sis. I hope you feel better. A lot of things are going around. Um, I believe the history hitman himself wasn't feeling too well. And so, um, you know, we want you all to be in the best of health always. Sister Tosh Monique, appreciate you, sis. Love you to life. Always appreciate you on the check-in. So, like I said, it was in the news. You know, I, I don't know if you all heard, but a 10-year-old a child um, uh, murdered his mother um, for a video headset game. And so that goes to the mental capacity of our people. You know, a 10-year-old child, first of all, to even think of murdering his mother, that whole dynamic is, um, you know, is something to ponder. That whole dynamic. You had a mother here in, uh, I believe, Coney Island um, who murdered her two children. Um, in a bathtub. So this is, is, is crazy out here. And it seems that, you know, it's so difficult for our people to grasp hold, grab hold of their mental capacity, their mental faculties. Um, also, um, more information is coming out about the murder of Sister Shaniga in Mexico, the city of Mexico, Shanquilla rather, in Mexico. More information is coming out about that. Um, so, you know, we're going to try to tackle some of those things later on in the program. And um, I see we got our sister Marcia on the check-in. Um, she getting ready. She getting ready. She getting ready. She behind the scenes, y'all. She, she getting ready. But um, something that um, I was having a, com a conversation uh, with a friend of mine. Because during the uh, Black Family Gathering Day, um, me and my family, we played, you know, various games. You know, um, one of the games we played was Lyrically uh, Correct. And in this game, um, they give you quotes or lines of various songs, and you have to either guess who the artist is or the name of that song, right? And so I was telling a friend of mine about the game. She had asked me about it. And I was telling her about it. And then we got into a conversation about the art of dance, right? Um, I don't know if you've all been to the um, Smithsonian African American Museum in Washington, D.C. But um, if you haven't, um, hopefully you'll check it out. But they had a whole, they have a whole um, uh, display or or. or a thingy about dance, right? And they talk about, you know, um, break dancing and, you know, dances of the 50s and the 60s, you know, and where they where they all come from, right? Um, so this sister was talking about um, Michael Jackson, right? And um, the moonwalk, you know, everybody associates Michael Jackson with the moonwalk. Now, um, a lot of people um, are confused, you know, as to where that dance originated from, right? Um, again, understanding the architects, not so much of those who are popular in history. And so I gave her four answers, right? So I says, who was the first to popularize the moonwalk? Was it Michael Jackson? Was it young children um, in the streets of New York City? Or was it James Brown? Was it Michael Crawford? Or was it Bill Bailey, right? So she says, of course, you know, Michael Jackson, but he got it from James Brown. So I said, are you sure about that? She said, yeah, yeah, I'm sure about that. You know, he got that from Michael Jackson. Uh, I mean, from James Brown. So I said, okay. So I went to... Um, the archives, you know, Sister Keisha don't be playing. And um, I said, well, what about Bill Bailey? She says, who's Bill Bailey? I said, that's the prop. That's the answer. Bill Bailey is the one who popularized the moonwalk. So she said, I never heard of him. So then I said, well, maybe you've heard of his sister, um, legendary jazz singer and actress Pearl Bailey. Pearl Bailey. 
So she said, yeah, 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 yeah. She said, but I didn't know that, you know, his, her brother popularized the moonwalk. So it's always important that we understand the architects of history, you know, when learning um, things. So I want to show you this clip and I hope YouTube don't stop me um, uh, because of the song that is played. This is, um, I think this song was in 1904. Um, I can't remember um, who did it off the rip. I have to go and check it out, but I will. But this is just for educational purposes. So we're going to try it and see how it flows anyway. How about that? So hold on one second, family. Let's go. Um, so just so you know, again, um, it's very important that we understand the architects of who popular, popularized uh, various things. Um, actually, um, it was Bill Bailey uh, tapping to um, an instrumental version of Lark's. The hit was uh, Waiting for Sunrise, sorry, performed by Paul Williams Quartet. Um, of course, I said he is the brother of legendary singer and actress Pearl Bailey. Um, it has nothing to do with her song, of course, um, Won't You Come Home, Bill Bailey, but it's just ironic. That's her brother's name. But again, the name of the dance was actually called The Backslide. And so it then became popularized by James Brown and others. Um, and then Michael Jackson picked it up um, after visiting here, New York City, seeing other people break dance and, you know, and he just made it popular and just took it to another stratosphere. So again, the person who popularized the moonwalk was Bill Bailey. Uh, yeah, I see that in the chat. I see that in the chat. Good, good looking out. But um, yes, so again, family, let us always remember architects of history. So I see we got our sister Marcia back. Uh, let me see if we can get her in there. Give me one second. There you go, sister Marcia. How you feeling? Peace, sis. Peace. Sorry for the delay. It's all right. It's all right. We working on some things too. We got um Ashe and Brother Tad to be joining us um in a few. Okay. So how was uh, your Black Family Day? Um, it was really quiet. I just went and visited other Black families. And I'm sorry. Hi, Sister Keisha. How <laughs> are you today? I'm wonderful. I'm <laughs> wonderful, sister. I'm wonderful. Yes. Yeah. So that's and good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Yes. No cooking on my side. The only thing I made was some jello shots and <laughs> I was good. <laughs> I know that's right. And, uh, you know, again, a uh, shout out to Team Swap. Um, always um, of service to our people. We all cooked. Those who didn't cook or those who did cook um, were serving uh, the homeless uh, here in the city of New York as we do every year. Um, and again, if you want to be down with that next year, then let me know. We can definitely use more hands. Um, it's difficult I did the you... same thing. That is so nice. I did the same thing yes. for like the past um, 12 years, like one year, like it coincided with my birthday and everything. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to do anything for my birthday this year except feed the people. And I just kept saying it and it just manifested. It was just like, 
you know, a grandpa that I knew was like, oh, I do this. I was like, grandpa, you do this? I was shocked. And so from that moment on, I was hooked. I go with this organization called Granville T. Woods. And you know, Granville T. was the electrician and did a lot of electrical things, right? I'm not going to say what I don't know. Um, so there are teamsters of electrician and carpenters and black folks giving back to the community, you know? And they used to do it with um, Baba Watusi branch um, over there in the African Poetry Theater. So now they do it somewhere else, but it's great. I'm, I'm attached to those folks for that. Good, 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 yeah. sis. It's always a good thing. We have to take care of ourselves. That's right. And depend on others to take care of us. So that's right. You know, whenever we can be of service to our people, it's always a good thing. I say. Uh, it's good for your spirit too. It's good I for say. your spirit. I so um, kudos to you for doing that. Um, Twelve years strong. I like it. Yes. I like. I like yes. it. Yeah. I like it a lot. So um, tell us. Tell us what you are expecting tonight with our great guest, um, Professor Baina Bello, who I see in the green room behind the scenes that we're going to bring you in a couple of seconds. But I know you excited. You was like, I got her on here. We got, we got to get her. We got to get her. <laughs> Before she travels, right? She's yes. traveling out um, to the motherland and she's going to do some more research and most likely going to come back and tell us all about the research. Um, so her just letting me know that, you know, she's available. Um, her access to us, you know, many people may not know that she has been diligently doing um, this weekly program during COVID. It was either weekly or monthly or bi-weekly, but she was doing this program with um, Brother Franz, who wrote several books about Aitsi, the Haitian Revolution, the people of the revolution and stuff like that. And when they bought that in the height of COVID, to help center folks, um, it was a pleasure. And from there, you know, I've always talked to her about certain things and, you know, within the large scheme of the program that she was hosting. Um, and just to know that she's available to us, right? Like, you know, we sometimes might take for granted the Leonard Jeffries, the Smalls, you know, like us who are in this, we access them often, right? Or Baba, um, common name of Rimba Ani, the Barutis, all of these folks that we have access to that so many other people need to learn to access as well because they're available to us. And so what I'm looking most forward to is to learn something new and to just, you know, silence myself in front of a master teacher. Exactly. My pen and pad, I'm ready to go. Me um, too. <laughs> always <laughs> willing to learn. Um, you never stop learning. And every day that I have feet to ground, I take time to learn. Take I time should. to learn. You never stop learning. And so, as you said, for us to have access so that our people can have access to knowledge is a blessing within itself. I see Sister Marie said, oh my God, I love her. You know, so <laughs> we have a lot of our younger folks and, and Sister Marie is an educator. So, you know, this comes full circle. So again, I'm excited to have her. I see her in the background. We're gonna bring her in. Family, welcome Professor Baina Bello. We are honored and pleased to have you with us here on Thorough Black Talk Worldview. Um, as my sister Marcia says, um, our education um, from you has taken us to greater heights. I know it has been for me. Um, I have been watching and learning from you since the days of the African Echoes in Jersey, um, with Brother Trust Graham and Brother Anuni um, and um, Renoko Roshidi. So 
to have this great anthropologist, healer, educator, activist with us tonight. I am humbled, humbled, humbled. So thank you, Professor Bello, for coming in and joining us here on Thorough Black Talk. Thank you very much for inviting me. And it is a pleasureful duty to be present with you. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. So before I get started, because my book is always loaded with a whole bunch of questions, <laughs> and I know time is of the essence. And so here on Thorough Black Talk, this is the community village. And being that a sister Marcia was able to make this contact, we are going to open up the floor to her first um, to ask questions and to get us started. And definitely, um, I see you, Sis Tosh. We definitely got questions. Those of you in the chat, we're going to put them up on the screen. Um, thank you all for tuning in. So, Sister Marcia, take the floor. Oh, Mommy Bello, it's such a pleasure and an honor to have you here. As my sister says, you graced us with opening our eyes and understanding who we are as Africans and wherever we were deposited, our people were deposited. Um, so recently you had the conversation on Shiro's with um, Brother Franz in Brooklyn and I had the pleasure to sit again in front of you and hear you speak about the Haitian women and African women across the globe and the works that we've done and continue to do for our children, right? Um, everything that we do is for the future generations and the footsteps and the paths that we lay are for the future. So um, one of the things that I think I still wanna to continue to expand upon is the role of the African woman in this saga that we're living in right now. And so many of my sisters, unfortunately, don't wanna embrace the full story. They'll rather, you know, adopt the Eurasian point of view on everything and not study us more. And so the question is, how do I hold space for this? Because it's tiresome to me to have so many sisters, so many beautiful, wonderful sisters not want to um, open their eyes and understand our legacy in this. So. That's my main objective for tonight. Well, it's an easy answer. You are responsible for you. You are duty bound and it's a huge job for me to do what I must do for Baina to constantly be checking out Baina, to keep Baina from falling off, from being discouraged, from taking the easier road. It's a big, 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 big job, keeping Baina in line. So actually we have absolutely nothing to do with what Marcia does. We can share what we know, and then Marcia will do what she chooses to. And there is nothing I or someone else can do about what Marcia decides to do. So every time we take on as our charge to change someone other than ourselves, it's, it's a losing battle. And I know we are in a so-called society that every other person is a pastor, a minister, a preacher, a, a politician, a, everybody got something they want you to buy, they want you to, you know, they want to transform you. And so we end up wanting to do the same thing. But that's not our way. Our way is I do what I do 
And I won't even say anything to you if you don't ask me. If you are not curious and say, you know, well, wait, Bello, I saw you do this this way. Why? If you don't say that, then I just do what I do. And it's hard enough to keep doing what I do. So I stick to that until someone stops me and says, I'd like to know why you do what you do. I'd like to know why you do this. Once you ask questions, then I'm duty bound to reply truthfully. But other than that, and that's the way even in so-called religion, that's the major, major change. We, you know, many of us today say, oh yeah, uh, the, the Christian religion is our religion. We created it first and blah, blah, blah. But is what they're doing, what you created? Come on. Got to be a little more in-depth. Going to in, in, in here. Mm -hmm. One thing, the practice that we had, no one was to tell you what to do. No one. No priest, no preacher, no nun, nobody. You are supposed to be attracted to what I'm doing because of the way you see me, the way I am. So you would like to be that way too. So you ask questions. But until you do, you do your thing, I do my thing, even if we're living in the same room. Mm. And that's a key thing to understanding African spiritual system. If you come to my house and I say, this tube of, of, of uh, lotion is the god Ogu, you cannot say, oh no, it's not. In my house, we have Ogu is a tree. That's your business. Hey, here, this is Ogu. And if you come to my service, this is what I'm presenting as Ogu. That's who we will serve as Ogu. Next week, I go to your house and your Ogu ceremony is being done around the tree. I will submit to what you're doing. Then I have two things and I can reflect and make my choice. But you cannot take a knife and say to me, no, you cannot use this as Ogu. And I cannot take a knife or gun and tell you, if you don't take this as a goo, I will kill you. Mm -hmm. No. Force feeding the information. Absolutely not. That is totally non-African. And that's what makes us so creative. Even in a language, the same language, there is the male version, there is the female version, there is the children's version, and then there is the version we all speak to understand each other. But when we, among ourselves, women, we want to talk and we don't want these men to hear what we're saying, we talk our women tongue in the same language. With different connotations. No one will say, oh, no, you cannot do this. Right, right, right. So as we come along and we're merging paths, right? And um, so many things are happening outside, balancing those outside and internal energy that fights with us, right? Because we want to find a home, we want to feel quote unquote accepted, um, and we want to build with others. And the tragedy of the difficultness in building. How do we deal with those conflicting interests with thinking of ourselves first, right? Everything I do, I do for Marcia and I'm making sure Marcia is whole, but there are entities that are bridging together and merging and sometimes they're conflicts and the conflicts, you don't want them to supersede the mission of us all, you know? 
Well, I wouldn't say that us all is a mission. The us all is a reality. Whether you are blind to it or not, okay? Whether I accept it or not, the reality of the world, the reality of the cosmos is that Ubuntu. We all are in it. Who, who's going to say, okay, well, me, I breathe, but I don't breathe oxygen. I choose to, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> you know, that's not worth an argument. People say a lot of things that are not worth responding to. Okay. That's the hardest task. Learning to be silent when a whole <laughs> bunch of garbage is being spoken around. True. Learning to respect other people's opinion without submitting to their stuff. That's a lot of hard work. So being you is not easy. Assuming who you are is a very complicated thing because we live in a world of one thought, one word imposed to all. When I say there is a disease out there, whether you see it or not, I say there's a disease and that's the end of that and no one can say something else. That's the world we're in. When that world said, all black people are slaves and that was the end of that. Whether you were king, you were Pharaoh, you were whatever, if they could grab you and drag you and chain you, that's exactly what they did. Now, how did this happen? Because we did not stick to who we are. We allowed people to come in and make us doubt, sway. You know, imagine here you are, maybe let's say 40 generations of us for admiring or relating to the tree Ogu. And then some jerks who don't look like us, don't speak our language, have nothing to do with us. Shows, us, so shows up with a gun and a cross and get all of us to turn away from the tree and start to talk about a Jesus or something. Just think about it. But if you had just the strength to say, well, you know what? My grandfather did this with the tree. My great-grandmother did it with the tree, da 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 so the tree it is. That's it. Not gonna okay. argue with you. Not gonna, you know, carry on with what you believe in. But me, I'm staying right here with this tree. That calls for us having that constant remembrance, right? That constant who you were yesterday, who someone else was the day before. And, you know, my family, if it wasn't for my persistence, I wouldn't know a lot of things that I know about IT, our family legacy. Um, it's the question part. And sometimes it, it hurts to see so many other people, even in your own home, like you were saying, you can rest with someone and that person still won't want to know the same things. And it just, it breaks the opportunity for our success on the tree with Ugu, right? Because we don't want to attach ourselves to that. We want to attach ourselves to other things. We easily forget ourselves and get busy today. We are conditioned to want to have the other think like us. No. Two thoughts can exist even in the same mind. So why not in two different heads? Okay. The hardest task is to stick to what you know and what you want and who you are. 
Well, in sticking to who I am, I'm going to open up the floor to my family. This is their show. Um, I want them to also receive the grace and the knowledge that you have bestowed upon me, especially during COVID. I don't know how many times I must thank you for that program. You and Franz what? It was so um, helpful in tackling a lot of things that you're going through, especially when they're trying to lock you in. And you want to also understand who everyone else was in your in your legacy. So with that, I'm opening up the floor back to my host, Keisha and brother Ashe. Nice to see you on the check-in. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sister Marcia. Um, one of the things that um, struck me with what you said was, you know, having two different ideas in the same place but sticking true to who sticking true to who you are um and that's something that we talk about here on this platform meeting people where they are um and still be able being able to do work within the community um that will better all of us um for example um one organization i belong to um sisterhood with a purpose we all come from different walks of life um, different belief systems, um, but are in one accord when it comes to um, helping our people where help is needed. Um, so again, I think that is something that we have to tackle within ourselves. And it's very difficult. It can be very difficult, especially um, when you're dealing with um, people who aren't of sound mind. Um, today, we have so, so many of our people, young and old alike, um, suffering mentally just to grasp an idea of reality. Um, how do we tackle that? Try to be sane yourself, my sister. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. None of us are same, none, zero. We cannot live in hell and be sane or healthy mentally. So that's one of the hard truths that we have to tell ourselves. Okay, If I don't stand up, I don't know how many times during the week and say, oh, Baina, girl, you're really crazy. Hmm. So you actually sat down and look at this, or did blah, 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 or whatever, whatever. And every time I could tell myself that hard truth, then I can also shape myself up. I can correct myself. I can accept, I don't need somebody else to tell me that this was not the right way. I can correct me. But if you do tell me, I say thank you because I face up to Baina often enough and I accept from the get-go that I am not mentally sane, I'm not psychologically so-called normal, whatever that is, in a world where you slaughter people, in a world where you put your knee on people's neck and while enjoying it while others are watching in a world where lies is the way of speaking, in a world where people do not know the difference between force and power. If I come into your house, drag you by force, beat you up, rape you, do whatever I do, and then you say, Baina is a powerful woman. No, you are mad, my sister, if that's what you think. I am not a powerful woman. I'm a forceful woman. Big difference. And the proof of it is what? I come into your house. I do all of this. I wreak havoc with my gun in my hand. And when that gun falls, what happens? Baina kneels down and says, please, Marcia, I was only joking. Please don't do anything to me. Hey, the woman who was so everything, was doing everything, the little gun falls on the floor and this woman is there begging. So you see, 
that was not a powerful woman. That was just a forceful person. And with a weapon, you can be forceful when the other one has none. But you can never be powerful if all you have is the weapon, the lies, and the tricks to get over. Mm. So first thing we need to, if we're going to be more or less sane, is to stop misusing words and calling powerful people or powerful countries, people who go steal everybody's wealth, mm. that's really not understand the ABC of vocabulary. Wow, that, that that right there was amazing. First of all, Mama Bello, it's an honor to see you again. Thank you for joining us. Um, you know, and I very much I got my book right here. So Keisha, she perfect time and she put the website. Everybody, please go check out Mama Bello's website. I got my book right here, my signed copy of the She Rose of the Haitian Revolution. Very good book right here, very good read. Great for yourself, for the children. Beautiful. Um beautiful drawings in here so this is a great vibe right here so you definitely want to cut that but um mama bello yes sir um right now in history i feel like haiti is at the best place it's ever been when it comes to culture um it's a gift and a curse because a lot of people are commercial commercializing haitian culture but at the same time, I feel like Haitian culture is reaching a, a wider audience. Right here, you have, um, here in New York, we have one of the biggest exhibits right now is uh, Basquiat, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Jean Basquiat. And they constantly doing one, when one exhibit ends, the next museum picks it up. They do a whole bunch of attractions about him. So we have Haitian artists, we have Haitian athletes, we have even the Haitian music, compa, all of this amazing music. It's starting to become commercialized and we're starting to see, um, you know, popular pop artists, reggae artists, soca artists doing collaborations with Haitian artists. So it's a beautiful thing. But at the same time, while the culture is being up uplifted, which it should be, I also see that the real love and the real support is not going where it's needed when it comes to Haiti. Uh, one of the recent articles that just popped up was that... Um, the U.S. is stopping certain trade from Haiti. Uh, I believe they were talking about the mangoes are not going to be the whole next year for, for, for America to have Haitian mangoes, which are like one of the best mangoes. And um, then if you talk about like factories shutting down and they also like they've been doing for years, but now they're talking about even bringing even more foreign military into Haiti right now. And, they, you know, they always try to demonize and say that hey, Haiti, we can't control ourselves and things of that nature. Um, so like I said, the coaches, they, they love us and they take from us. Like they always been doing. No, they do not love you. Please don't tell mm -hmm. yourself no lies. They love the culture. Oh, oh, come on. Right. They do not love our culture either. No. Okay. No. Selling has nothing to do with loving. Mm. Okay. Now let's take, let's some Kofa a bit, turn our head back to a recent past. During this hardcore chattel, chattel slavery, did the white man sleep or not with the black woman? Mm -hmm. eh? He yeah. raped her, slept with her in every shape, way, form, whatever. Was that love? Nope. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one of the proof is that the baby that were born, the babies born out of this interaction, this sexual interaction, Mm -hmm. was sold like everything else. So sleeping with me so you would have a baby or whatever number of babies I would give and then just snatch them off my breast and selling them away, mm -hmm. is that a demonstration of love? No, you're right. So this thing that we call a Euro-Christian, I don't know if it's a person, whatever it is, has shown none of the element of 
Ubumuntu. The humanity that makes you human. It's not the physical that makes you human. It is through your behavior that I will know whether or not you are a human being. So if we make a list of what these people have done on this earth the past 1,000 years, whether to each other or to other people, do you think they might qualify as humans? Oh. All right. So can something, no matter what the appearances or the words that they emit, but can something that has no ability to love from what we can see, no understanding of what is human behavior. I mean, come on, you take the smallest population on this planet and First, we, if we look at the first, let's say, 1,000 years among themselves, they committed every possible crimes on each other. Then they discovered Africa, since they're always discovering. So they discovered Africa. They slaughtered nearly half of the population of the continent. Can we call that human behavior? Oh. And in spite of all the crimes committed, today, while they speak God, love, democracy, what are they doing that is different from what their grandfather used to do? They still feel that everything you own, everything that's under your feet, whether gold, diamond, uridium, I don't care what you call it, it belongs to them. It's under my feet, but it belongs to them. Have you ever heard of any African or child of Africa, of Kemet, Akebulan? Have you ever heard one of us say, hey, in, over there in that country, there is such and such, I want to have it. No. I'm going to go kill everybody there to get it. We have, you know, Dr. Wade Noble says, know your history and it will erase the mystery. Mm. The problem is most of us don't take the time to know enough history. But if we take right. two simple examples, all of you have learned Oh, Christopher Columbus discovered America, blah, 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 all the garbage and lies. Okay. But most of us don't know. In 1311, Mansa Abu Bakari II mm -hmm. built 200 boats. He wanted to see other peoples. So he built 200 boats, not three caravels, by the way. Huh? I'm talking about 200 boats. 100 boats for people to travel with him. 100 boats with provisions and gifts to offer to the places that he will visit. Wow. That's two very different ways. The other one, one is coming with a letter saying that you can take everything you want, force the people to become Christian if they refuse kill them, rape their wives, burn their houses, steal their children. That's the program from the get-go. Our program, we're going to go see what other people are on this earth. We're going to take a hundred boats full of food, gifts, goals, this, that, to give to those that we're going to meet. Do you understand why they can't tell you? They can teach you in school about Abu Bakari too. Because things would be much too clear. Simple examples make you clear on things. Okay? So when we are 
in a world conceived of, imposed upon, dominated by that kind of a sick creature. Ah, here is a word. I was looking for a word because I don't want to say person when I'm referring to it. Okay. Creature might do. Okay. We'll, we'll keep trying. We'll keep, you know, figuring it out. Uh, so you are in front of a creature that has no respect for nothing, has never respected anyone. As a matter of fact, last week, I put myself through torture to a certain degree because I looked at a series called The Borgias, B-O-R-G-I-A-S, talking about one of the Pope's uh, in the Vatican in the early, in around 1400 and whatnot. My goodness, when you look at that, brother, sister, everybody sleeps together, take, kill each other, slaughter, sell, buy, you know what, our coffers are empty, oh my goodness. Well, my 14-year-old daughter here, if we sell it to the king of Spain, the king of Spain would have to pay us the dowry. And hey, wow. you, we got to learn, even though, yeah, that's movie. They did certain, um, they arranged, I know the story of Alexander VI, the Pope. So I know what kind of wicked thing he was. So they cleaned up his story. And uh, they arranged things whichever way, but it was interesting to look with my own eyes and see how wicked they are each able to be to each other. And the same father who's selling daughter here, selling son and putting pitting people with it against each other, that same father has one key word in his mouth. Family is everything. We must do it for the family, for the love of the family, the love of God, the love of, oh my goodness. We don't know how to do these things. If Baina gets nasty and she does whatever she's not supposed to do, then Baina start having lots of problems with Baina saying, girl, you were wicked. The way you talked to Ashe yesterday, that was not correct. And I can spend nights and nights and nights unable to properly rest. These people, they do it and they do it over and over and over again and find wonderful ways of justifying what they did. It's all okay. And you know what? The best thing, one of the best lines in this thing, he went to confession and his wonderful confessor, he's saying to his confessor that, yeah, you know, uh, I pledge uh, chastity and I've been fornicating all over and I still, and I do this and I do that. And the very profound confessor said, don't worry about all of that. That is not your covenant with God. You are still doing the work of God. God is happy with your work. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. So, I saw that series too. I, I know the series you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> it's something to see. You know, we should watch it and make all of our so-called Christian folks watch it. Mm -hmm. With no comments from you. Man. So so uh, with that being said, uh, could you tell our people, um, our, our audience, because we have an audience of people that, you know, are, are very serious on our platform. And that's what we're grateful for. Um, can you tell us the state of what's going on with our brothers and sisters in Haiti right now? Because we know the revolution has never ended. Uh, we have real people out there and we have some fake people, just like we have turncoats here and turncoats in Africa. We got to deal with these people, but there are real people out there that are really doing work. And uh, we would like to know what is going on on the ground out there in Haiti. And are there people that we can, besides yourself, of course, that we can tap into 
And um, because a lot of I know people that actually go and, and travel to Haiti, and I plan on taking a trip myself as well. But you know, we want to make sure that we're not giving our money to the to the wrong people, or if we come in to do work, you know, we doing work with the right people. Can you just tell us what the, what is the status of what's happening in in, uh, in Haiti right now? And is there any way that we could support, or any way that um you know we could tap in and just keep abreast on the real story? Because we know that we're bombarded with um you know the image of oh we're killing ourselves out there and like they right now a hot topic in haiti they talk about the gangs that the armed gangs that are taking over but they don't tell you about the 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 un that's out there that say that they coming out there but the they, major, they talk about the little gangs exactly the little gangs have no power right because the little gangs are only working for the international gangs all right now let's, I'm gonna try to make it real short. All right, all of you here, I know you. I've known you for the past 20 years. None of you can buy a loaf of bread regularly for your family. You don't have a job, never have, and you don't have, you don't know, I, I'm still surprised that you're still alive because I know how little you have to live on. Hmm, that was last year. But this year, I see Marcia walking around with 10, 20 people around her. They each have a $20,000 weapon. I see Ashe, he got 400 guys with him. They have 20, 30, $50,000 weapon. And the other sister, hey, she is all set up too. And these folks, you guys can shoot. 24 7 non stop. You're never out of ammunition. Where the hell you get it from? Yeah. Yeah. I know you didn't buy it. So. Uh. Okay. Now, let's see. Who can buy weapons? The weapons we're talking about, the police in Haiti does not have. They have they are under a certain some sort of embargo. They cannot buy that kind of weapon. Mm. So they can buy little guns, little stuff, you know, uh, Galil, old mm. stuff, but no twenty thousand dollars, fifty thousand. And IT anyway don't have a budget for that. Okay, so the police cannot buy it. Who are the people who come in and out without being checked? Diplomats, church, and millionaires. Mm. So who brings the gun in? Not you guys. Right. You, it's given to you. You can't even, you're not even qualified to negotiate. No matter how cheap they would go down, you couldn't afford it. Okay. And there's something else I'm observing. Even though I saw in the papers that Ashe made three kidnappings last week. One of them paid him $2 million, the other one 500,000, the other one whatever amount. But I'm looking at Ashe, he's still wearing the same old clothes he's been wearing for the past two or three years. Right. His shoes are still raggedy. Every time I see them film Ashe, his shoes are raggedy. So, What's going on with all this money Ashe is getting? Cash. See, we gotta just think, observe. So I cannot, I don't have a problem with Ashe, with any of you. My thing is, who the hell is giving you the weapons? Mm -hmm. Right. And whoever gives you this weapon tells you who to kill tells you who to kidnap. Wow. So all the news about the gangs, the gang, that's the distraction to keep you from thinking, to create fear, to make you afraid of going home. That's what it's all about. But the real story is beyond these people that we have in the news. Okay? And in recent times, 
there have been at least, I've been saying this for years, people say, Baina, you exaggerate. Oh my oh God, that, that is impossible what you're saying. The church, the church could never. I say, okay, let's wait and see. Well, recently there's been at least two cargoes and boats full of weapons for the church. Wow. A scandal broke out. There's been cargoes and four million millionaires. People who who own a port in a country. This is my personal port. So my boats come in and out. Nobody checks. Nobody knows what's in it. As long as there's my name on it, you, you're not doing anything with it. So that's the first element that we have to grasp. Now, the second thing, whatever is going on in IT right now, it's going on in Jamaica, it's going on in Trinidad, it's going on in Ghana, it's going on in Nigeria, it's going on in Mali. It's going on in every rich soiled country. Mm -hmm. If you look at the resources, a map of resources, you will also identify a map of countries where nothing is working. So, Use your head, use your heart, put things together. Don't go see what, don't Google it. Okay, so. Yeah, and that's another thing. I'm glad you mentioned that too, because I know a lot of people that are interested in going to Haiti, myself included. And um, even some Haitian people that I know, like Haitian friends, will tell me, look, don't go. It's not the time to go, da, da, da. And I've been hearing this for years. I'm ready to just pack a bag, book a flight, and just go and see what's going to happen. If I got to pick a gun up out there, I got to do it. But I'm a gun, I'm, I'm touching the motherland because, you know, that the soil is so rich and we're not just talking about, you know, the resources. We're talking about the, the physical resources. We're talking about the spiritual resources. You know, this book right here, Shiro's of the Revolution. This book is a spiritual resource or you know, a tool so you could tap into these resources that we have, all of these sheroes right here. And Mama Bai, can you tell us, is the book available on your website? Uh, I don't believe it's on on my website, no. Okay, it's well, follow up and we'll, uh, Thorough Black Talk, we'll find a way so that we can get you a copy of this book if you don't have it, and we'll share it on our page in the future, but you definitely got to get you a copy of this. But um, yeah, we, we ready to touch down and we ready to, to, to soak up you know, because we know the rich history of Haiti, the first place to really have a successful, well, one of the first places to have a really successful revolution, you know, and you were the one who broke that down. I remember one, one of your videos where you talked about uh, the popularization of the Haitian revolution, you know, being the first prominent and well-known one. But you, you mentioned that there were other revolutions that were successful as well that we don't even know about, right? Yes, there were others. Uh, the big difference is that IT created a nation after it. And even after we won the last and two major things. One, IT had to fight against the Spanish army, the British army, and the French army, and beat all three of them in order to win the final war. Now, even after winning the final war, newspapers all over Europe said there was no way we could declare independence. And on January 1st, we did it. January 1st, 1804. And they were even more vexed. Having been beaten, they were vexed. But having declared our nation, and in our original constitution, we didn't just declare independence, but we declared ourselves to be free, sovereign, and independent from all forces of the universe. No one else has gone this way. All forces of the universe, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is the other thing that they really upset with IT. Because IT did not deal with things, you know, just- oh, <laughs> We went further and made our declaration 
a universal, true universal declaration of independence. Not a word declaration of independence. Okay? Right. And that is why they continue to fight us in every way, shape, and form. Yeah. And the today, the situation is that is going down, is going bad, is going worse because too many of us have gone to too many of their churches and schools. Mm -hmm. That's right. So many of us have no clue how to be themselves. Uh, one of the things I often mention, and it to me is, is like such a painful thing. Imagine uh, Marcia is my daughter. And I scrubbed floors and I did all kind of sacrifices to earn a few dollars and pay school for Marcia and buy uh, books for her and buy uniforms and take her to school and do this and do that. And then when Marcia has her degrees, everywhere she goes, she says, oh yes, the university of, the university of, the university. She never says, my mother, Baina. Ooh. Mm. And that, to me, is a crime that we commit against our own self. Mm -hmm. We're forever advertising for a place we paid to get whatever we got and a piece of paper from. Mm. But the person who sweat and bled in order for us to even be able to get to that place, we never mention that person. Wow. That's right. That's how far, you see, that's madness. A normal person, in fact, your name in most African languages, the name is, I am Baina, daughter of so-and-so-and-so. I'm Baina, uh, I'm Ashe, son of so-and-so-and-so. Mm -hmm. So your name used to be Whoever brought you into this world, whoever fought to raise you, today we have nothing to do with these people. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, it's what church we go to, what sigma something, something delta you belong to, what uh, all kinds of structures that does absolutely nothing for you. Yeah. That you have to pay a fee for <laughs> to belong to. Mm -hmm. And you pay it with kindness, right? Uh -huh. But when it comes down to, you know, this type of information, when it comes down to programs that Mama Baino is hosting, oh my goodness. I'm, I'm, oh my goodness. And how you're much, like, how you much? should give. Monster. You could give you could give your membership five hundred plus to those types of organization, but mm -hmm. you wouldn't give five dollars, fifty dollars, or nothing. You know, you rather yeah. give nothing to the development of yourself. And I think that's the internal struggle that I deal with because I know so many wonderful people out in these in this world in this universe as this Aline claims, right? Because he understood that life didn't just exist here. It exists elsewhere. And I'm claiming territory over every space. And to not want to acknowledge that information and give you five dollars. Mm -hmm. You'll okay. give. You know, let me finish answering the question. So yes, there are organizations that are struggling and to do whatever their purpose is. And that's, uh, that's the guarantee for tomorrow. And in many instances, organizations have to, serious organizations cannot be fronting, cannot have, you know, because they will soon come after you. Mm -hmm. um, 
I remember when I first started Fondation Felicité in IT, and uh, we, maybe it was the fifth or the sixth year that we were celebrating Dessaline's birthday. And we were gonna do it in five or six different cities. The Ministry of Interior called and asked me, who gave you permission to celebrate Dessaline's birthday? I wow. said, well, um, maybe you are misinformed. He's my father. So uh, he gave me permission to celebrate him. Right. I said, no, this is serious, blah, 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 blah. I said, well, you know, I, I don't have two answers. I've already responded to your question. Do you have another question? <laughs> okay. So, well, they threatened us quite a few times. But the funny thing of the story is, so last year, which was the 22nd edition of Dessaline's, 21st edition of Dessaline's birthday, the year before that, the government declared Dessaline's birthday a holiday. Mm. The same government who threatened us 14 years earlier. Mm. Okay, now they're calling to ask us information about that because mm. <laughs> they're going to make it a holiday right now uh the set the other thing is the soup january 1st is a very big day for us it's not just independence right. day mm -hmm. and desaline's wife empress felicity when we managed to find her recipe of the soup and her purpose, the purpose for the soup is not just about having a special meal for the day, but she tells you two things. She says, independent soup is the way she call it, not soujoumou like we call it. Independent soup is not independent soup if it doesn't work. Mm. I make soup, but I must make sure I send a bowl to Marcia. Mm -hmm. Marcia makes soup, but she must send a bowl to Ashe. Ashe makes mm -hmm. soup. We must make sure everybody in the country gets to have a bowl of soup that day. Mm -hmm. So it's not just if, if you make the soup, you, your, your children, and your husband, that's not independent soup. That's soup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you make, I the make soup, independent soup. All right. <laughs> When you make the soup and you share it. Yes. And so Fondation Felicité has been for the past 23 years, organized that like, all throughout December, we do fundraising. Generally October, November, December. These days things are so tough, but well, it's gonna be just December. So we do fundraising and then we're able to send this to, to, pre to prepare people to prepare it properly to train people to pro prepare it properly. And then we send them off to whatever localities they are from to make it in their localities. So some of the better years, we were able to share the soup with 12,000, 13,000, 14,000 people that day. Mm -hmm. We sent to prisons, we sent to hospitals, we sent the soup a little, you know, just about everywhere. In fact, <laughs> uh, one year we went to for Liberté, another town in the north, to distribute the soup. And so when we went to the prison to bring soup, the commandant, the chef, told us, you know, no, you do you have a letter, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, we wrote a letter, we showed a copy of letter, da, da. Well, but if you don't have, you cannot. I said, okay, what are they eating today? Well, our provisions sort of finished three days ago, so we're waiting for Wow. So you would rather people starve than have a meal on the day that was created for you on the moment that gives you your liberty. Though you don't understand it, that's why you're in prison. You're refusing people to eat. I hope that changed, that conversation changed in the middle. Right. Ultimately, we convinced the guy. But the best part is, after he gave permission that we could give to the prisoners, he came to me says, are there any chance that the, the policemen can have some too? 
<laughs> oh, that sounds so Haitian. And, and it's so crazy for me to say this because right. there are so many things that my Haitian. people will do. And you're just like, no, oh, that is so Haitian. It's like, not Haitian. Okay. All confused people okay. behave the same way. Okay. Once you don't know who you are, Mm. You, you could be anything, and mm. you could be you flip flop one minute. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a bird, and the next minute I want to be a fish, and then the next minute after that I want to be a horse. That's not a problem because I don't know who I am. Ooh. Ooh. Depending on what's going on around me, then I'll take the color of whatever, and that's what you will find that kind of reaction throughout. So anyway, soon I hope all of you will, uh, our, before the end of this week, our website for the soup should be ready. And I hope as many of you will help promote it as well as contribute, you know. But the key program of Fondation Felicité is the seminar, Learn to Know Yourself. And that is what we affirm we're a firm believer. See, once you have the keys, the tools to getting to know yourself, then you're on your way to whoever you truly is. But when you are unaware that you're not even yourself, you don't even have a hint that whoever you're presenting as is not who you are. See, uh, the image I like to create sometimes is that of a fish. There's a fish in the sea dreaming, wants to become a, wow, you guys are really up on your stuff. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, Sister, wow. Keisha. Sister Keisha is on it. <laughs> All right, Sister Keisha. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so the, uh, the fish is in the sea nice little pink fish in the sea and he's just dreaming he wish he was a bird he would love to climb up on a tree and go sing on top of the tree and all of that well that was his lucky day a little girl gets in the sea and a little girl a trap catches that fish and run to the tree to his brother and to her brother and say look look what i got and the fish is really happy the fish is real close Why to it doing this but then what happened The fish dies. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens to us when we don't know who we are. That's right. We have aspirations that are not our aspirations. Ooh. We strive and fight to get to places that will kill us because it's not our natural habitat. Wow. So with that, I'm going to ask you to go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. When um, Brother Ashe was talking about the mango distribution and how they're going to cut that off coming forward um, or moving forward mm -hmm. in 2023. And I kind of heard you expound that's good. Yes. Can you give me some detail on why the trading and bringing an economic revenue is not sustainable at this moment for us? Well, we've been doing this for years. What has it brought? Mm. Mm. I mean, come on, think people, okay? If you do a program, the, the World Bank, I think 70 some odd years ago, declared that, you know, they're gonna have a program of, um, remember what it's called, but anyway, something that's supposed to help us, you know, improve our situation. But the more programs come in to improve the situation, what do we see? Destruction. The situation goes down and down. Mm -hmm. 1950, IT was ahead of China, ahead of Cuba, ahead of the Dominican Republic, in the finances, in commercial, in economics, et cetera, et cetera. In education, when an Asian came in the 60s, my father's people, 
Now, my father's people came to the U.S. in the 40s. These people, they did not finish secondary school. They could come in straight to the university. And so explain what secondary school is for folks that may not be very school, familiar. Okay, the high school. Okay, mm -hmm. somebody who's two years, three years before finishing high school, come mm -hmm. to the U.S. and go straight to the university after mm -hmm. testing. Okay. Today, I don't know what the situation is, but I know it's not, they're not even even with a degree, they're questioning your knowledge. Mm -hmm. okay. So, what has happened? The more the world has come into the more. Foreigners come into your country and decides for you, what do you think? So you, you actually believe, okay, the U.S., France, England, who has declared that you are black people are not people. Black people have no soul. That people were created by God to be the slaves of others. And that now they want to have programs for you to stand up on equal footing with them. When in the reality, you are superior to, to them without ever going to school. So when you go to school, you know what happens to you? <laughs> you lose all your good sense. All mm -hmm. the stuff that you use to build pyramids. You're stripped. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. They get from you. In fact, there was a young Asian guy, Ayende Jean-Baptiste. Ayende Jean-Baptiste was a little boy. When he was four years old, this child could make speeches more impressive than Louis Farrakhan. Mm. Six, seven years old, he was being invited everywhere and speaking and whatnot. And that young man... When after he finished school, he got a degree or master's degree, whatever it was, NASA grabbed him, gave him a big job with big money. Less than a year later, he left the job. He said, actually, these people, they're not paying me to do whatever it is the contract said I'm supposed to do. They just put things in my head at night to take. And he left the job. And, you know, lots of people say, wow, that should be a job at the NASA, da, da, da. But he knew what he was doing. See, lots of us don't understand these things. We need to wake up. This world is not friendly to us. These structures, no matter what they call themselves, why is it every time they want to test something, they're not sure how fast it will kill you, they want to do it on us? I mean, these are not what people who love you do. Mm -hmm. And we all know about it. But yet, we are forever thinking, well, you know, maybe this time, maybe this time. No, 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 no. So let me finish this way. IT is the country, the single country. Yeah, many countries fought, many people. St. Croix, three women freed St. Croix from the Dutch in the 1700s. You know, you told us this at the Shiro's event, right? And I went looking for it and I couldn't find context they're, behind they're, it. They're gonna give, well, you Google it. Go Google it's it. It's not happening. <laughs> I need a Britannica. Okay. Brazil. Black people in Brazil created nations where till today, some of the African descendants in Brazil speak Yoruba and some other languages because they had created pockets of their own life, run away from slavery, find a mountaintop and put themselves out there and created, but they did not declare an independent nation, okay? Uh, in many other places, but IT did it by the rules. We entered their army, mastered whatever they knew, and beat them. Ooh. We entered the British army, mastered their tactics, and, their, and beat them. 
enter the French, and Dessalines had a specialty. He likes to go and fight with you with fewer troops than you do. You're coming in with 12,000. He measures you up and he says, well, this one, ah, these 12,000, I could take that with 7,000. So he goes with 7,000 men and whip your butt. <laughs> you come in with 25, he comes in with 18 and beat you up. And they're still trying to figure out how did he do it? Well, they can continue to do their research in their studies. Tell them to Google it. And, right. <laughs> right. And if we are smart, even when we know exactly, we will keep it to ourselves. Mm. That's our other sickness. Yep. Four of us have agreed to do something. We don't even know exactly how we're going to do it. We're still debating the ups, the possibilities that huh, somebody's on TV. Yeah, we're going to next week. Next week. Mm -hmm. Please take Mother Nature as your model. See how I did it? When this man and that woman got together to do it, it was in the night, nighttime out of 10. That sperm went and met that egg in an even greater darkness. That embryo and fetus spent nine months in absolute darkness before coming out into the sun. And if you're smart, you don't take your baby out into the street two days old, one week old, you're all over the place in the kind of markets and stuff with your child. No. Everything must be protected and covered mm -hmm. until it is ready for the world mm -hmm. to see it. Right. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have another question about IAT. Um, you know, when we talk about the culture, um, or the history, I should say, um, we, we're talking about a country that I feel personally deserves their own reparations. You know, like you just mentioned, they fought the Spanish, the British, the French, everybody. You know, they deserve their own reparations and their own right from these countries. Yet they're doing the opposite to this day by continuing to owe and pay France money. Um, do, do you see, I mean, like right now we're in this fake quote unquote moral conscious stage where white people are, I guess they're waking up and they're, they're having a moral conscious all of a sudden and they care and black lives matter and they're giving money. I just read an article. They said uh, Britain uh, is giving back a bunch of artifacts that they took from the Benin uh, kingdom and they're giving it back to Nigeria now and they're taking stuff out the museums and giving it back. Do you ever see the end of uh, IAT having to pay France, and if there is, how do we go about? Because right in this day and age, 20, 20, 22, 23, it's like it's literally insane that they are still paying France. You know, it, it really doesn't make sense. So, what what do you think no, of that? That is not so. We're not paying France at this. You know, this this thing. And if we're talking about the same debt, the mm -hmm. same fake debt, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Because if I was for 312 years enslaved and worked for you and brought you to great wealth, and then when I took my life on the battlefield and beat your butt, and then after it, you're going to ask me to pay for your loss. I mean, something is very wrong, but, but that's the kind of, that's their minds. Their mind is twisted. And all of them did it, by the way, different forms. Okay, friends did it to, to all the African countries. Till this day, the African countries are paying for not being enslaved anymore. Uh, Jamaica, the US, the British did it to, to, to Jamaica. They, do, they all do it. That's their the twisted mind. That's how it works. Okay, I enslave you now that you fight, fight your way and you become free. I have lost a slave, so you must pay me. That's their thinking. Now, here's what I say. To change things around, we must call 
a spade a spade. Right now, Haiti is a country at war. We don't call it war. We call it gang, we call it, but if people are being shot at all day long and you don't even count how many people dead this week, how many were murdered this week, how many were murdered last month, and nobody is keeping track of, all right, how many, we have U.S. weapons for the most part, but there are some French weapons there too. There are some Russian weapons there. Who's keeping the documentation? Who mm -hmm. is keeping track of how many are being killed with U.S. weapons, with French weapons? With, these are the facts. These are, we have to be scientific about it, or at least arithmetic about it. We have to know the numbers. Okay. We're not doing that. But I say number one, call a spade a spade. IT is a nation at war right now. Whether you want to call it a civil war, a imposed civil war, a whatever way, you know, got to find the language, I don't know. But war is part of it. We must face up. The minute the people will start to know, hey, we are at war, okay? Who's the enemy? People will start asking us. What, how does that enemy function? Then you start thinking differently. But if you're saying, oh, insecurity, what is insecurity? Well, there is no security nowhere in the world. Things happen everywhere. So it's a very vague term. It doesn't put you in a frame of mind. Oh, this week, things are better. I was able to go to the store and run back home. Hey, this is what you call better? Okay, so number one, call it what it is. This is war. Number two, identify all the elements, all the those involved in whatever way that they are. Got to write it all down. Got to keep the records. Number two, number, number three, when they ask me, for example, oh, how can we help you? How can France, England, da, 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 the good people of these, you know, help. I said, well, convince your governments to stay out of IT. Mm. Stay away is the biggest help you can give, number one. Number two, stop stealing our wealth while you are conditioning our people to think of themselves as being poor. See, it's, it's working on two levels. Number one, I put all this literature and all kinds of stuff out there for every Asian, even the Asian who can eat every day, think of himself as a poor person. Because he hears all the time, I is so poor, I is so poor. I... Meanwhile, the uranium from IT is sold $30 million an ounce. Who the hell? Can... I never see uranium in the budget. <coughs> On the income side, there should be uranium somewhere. There should be gold. There should mm -hmm. be bauxite. All the stuff that's been taken away. None of it comes in. The only thing we have as entry in IT is donations, gifts, mm -hmm. and loans. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong with this. Mm -hmm. And as long as others are telling you what to do, then they tell you what fits their interests. So, A, stay away. B, stop stealing. Stop lying. Make believe we don't exist. Leave us alone. Give us 21 years. And then we'll do mm. mm. But can we say this same situation here in urban settings of the United States? Like, there are so many pockets of places where there is dysfunction. And I think that's one of the things that I always, in my head, um, critically thinking about, like compare, making the larger thing look as small as what do you see in your own community? Like, don't sit there and look at it from such a foreign place. Like, oh my God, look what's happening in Mali. Look what's happening in Zimbabwe when 
or Rwanda right now. Right now, there's all this conflict that's brewing in Rwanda and the Congo. Excuse but we me. Can see it. Excuse me. Yes. I just come back from spending a week in Rwanda. Yes, mm. ma'am. I did not see any of that conflict. Yeah, you see? So this is the same I thing. Disciplined people working hard at improving their lives. These are the things. These are the things, like these are the conflicts that, you know, we hear outside and then you're on the ground, boots on the ground, and you don't see these things. So the perpetuation, the propaganda that goes out there of what to be afraid of and how not to build networks with people and how that stifles us as a collective. And I know I'm supposed to think of me as, self but at the same time i do always often think of the collective and how to build networks and and create mm -hmm. of course opportunities yes well create opportunities we're not we're not in the same mind so we cannot create opportunities let's not lie mm. to ourselves mm. if the if we understand that step 1 is i baina has to work on baina and as Baina does her work, Marcia looks on and says, hmm, I like this. I want to support that. Or I want to do something similar. Whichever, that's fine. Okay? Then as Marcia works, Ashe looks at her and says, hmm, I like that. So the networking is done naturally. It's not about somebody saying, Listen, Ache, if you don't join for National Felicity, then don't talk to me anymore. <laughs> but that's the model that is, you know, the UN and all of that. That's the model. If you don't join us, we're going to shoot you. Uh, I think all of you here remember when the United States of America, 3,000 by 2,000 miles superficie, decide to attack uh, the little island of Grenada. Mm -hmm. Less than 700 million people slaughtered the entire government mm -hmm. and That's said it was the And mm -hmm. most of us repeated that nonsense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so start with you, work on you, concentrate on you, concentrate on making yourself each day better than the day before. As you do that, all the ones who are naturally on the level where you're at and aspire to what you aspire will come in around you. Don't set up, you know what? When I created Fondation Felicité, it was two of us. We have a foundation, well, actually, we, the first day we talked about it, there were 50 people, but when we asked, who would be members? We were two. <laughs> Everybody thought it was a wonderful idea, but two people joined, me and another one. And we had to struggle to create a board of eight people. <laughs> and the board was created the first meetings, the first year. It's supposed to be that each meeting every month is at somebody else's home. Well, guess where did we did the 12 meetings? Yeah. In one home. Mm -hmm. And instead of eight people, it was three couple of times, four couple of times, and then it was just the two of us. Mm. Okay, no problem. When we opened up our monthly conference. We bought 10 chairs, we put 10 seats, and I was the speaker. One o'clock, I start to speak. There is no one else there. A couple of people showed up maybe at 1.30. It started at 1, 1.20, 1.30. You imagine what you're reading your paper, you're very serious, and then this one person is coming, see 10 empty chairs, and you're talking. 
<laughs> they almost feel like running away. <laughs> <laughs> but if they know, they know all the seats are filled. There are other people that are sitting there. Okay. We did this for almost three years before we started having eight to 10 people to join it. You must count on you and you do what you believe needs to be done. And then the others are gonna come in, those who recognize themselves. See, otherwise it's the tactics of the propaganda, the lies and whatever, you know, we have the big commercial, da, 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 da. then you have 10 million. Mm -hmm. But if you don't wanna use that, then you will slowly build what you have to build. Oh, mommy, you are so informative and you give us um, the space to like explore in our heads um, how to continue on, right? Um, 2023 is going to be an amazing year for organizers, for free thinkers, for critical thinkers to um, continue on building and strengthening ourselves and our community alike. Um, I'm not going to speak for Third Black Talk, but I'm going to speak for myself, definitely giving a healthy donation for... Um, the Subjumu on January 1st. I'm also going to speak to oh, Soup Independence. Oh, Soup Independence, yes. I'm going to speak to my family in Jacmel and see um, how we can contribute from Jacmel and feed the folks in Jacmel who, um, you know, we have a, we have a little place um, that we could welcome in people. So I will definitely work on having my family and the people that are in Jacmel do the same for the community. I cannot be in Haiti this year, but next year it sounds like I'm going to do a soup jumu, uh -huh. jumu time. Um, so Asha, you could come and, and, and take a trip with me in December yes. of 2023. Don't yeah. get up, pick up and go. That's no, 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 no. I said December 2023. Yeah, I'm talking to us. Oh, <laughs> you mentioned earlier, you just feel like getting up and pick up. No, no, no. Plan properly and know where you're going. And then, yeah. Yeah. So That's 2023. The, the, but I'm, the other I'm thing. I'm sorry, mommy. Airplanes are still going. Mm -hmm. All right. And mostly, you will find people that don't look like us fill the plane. Mm -hmm. But wow. we don't, you know, we have, you know, they, 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 mm -hmm. the scarce tactic, tactics work very well. But yeah. it's not to say that there is nothing. It's not a comfortable place right now. It's true. You have to use your instincts, your intuitions to get things done. You can't forget yourself. But we have to go through this. That's okay. And get ready for 2024. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> we got a couple minutes left. We definitely want to say from Thorough Black Talk, from all of us, we love you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much. For all of the work, everything that you've done, all the wisdom, the love, the information that you've given us. We are all children of you and we just take that torch and we are just trying to better ourselves and be better Africans, better men, better women so that we could take the lessons that you give us and apply them and make some real change. Um, honored we have an Aishen in the building, our sister Marcia to, to keep us connected. And we just want to use these last minutes to give you an opportunity to share and say anything that you want to say to our audience. And we definitely want to say, um, you know, any way that we can support you. I don't know if you have Cash App. Uh, we yeah. can get that and we can share your Cash App as well as Sister Keisha has put the website, anything that's for sale. or uh, Please, we're going to look forward to the website being updated so that we can donate to the Independent Soup, uh, which will be coming up soon. 
but um yeah we would like to get your cash app and let us know anything any way that we can we can be helpful and uh just honor and support anything that you have going on yes sir oh how was it okay this here all right let me just put this uh... once again if you guys are interested in the book while uh mama Baina is pulling something up shiro's of the haitian revolution that it was written by her it's a great book a nice easy read you can read it with the family with the children or with yourself it's very informational and i believe the book is actually on amazon so you can pick it up there but you could also go to the brother that has um produced franz. The, yeah the brother franz his website is thoroughbredbooks.com thoroughbredbooks.com you could check it out on thoroughbredbooks.com or check it out on amazon but this is definitely worth the buy and you ain't you ain't gonna get it like me i got my son copy you know <laughs> so don't be jealous now don't be jealous but i got my son copy so you know but get it while you can because it's a it's a definitely a good resource but um yeah mama and this is your platform as well so if there's anything you want to come up here and share you know you got my number just keep in touch just the marcia um, just let us know, even if you need me to come carry some groceries for you, it don't matter. You need a cup of sugar. Let me know. New York, we're here on deck and we got some real warriors out here. That's, um, you know, serious about it. So thank you. That's very good to know. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the cash app link is on the screen is also in the chat. Um, and also PayPal. Um, and again, if you go to the website and, um, Click the links. It'll direct you to those PayPal's and cash apps, the link tree as well. Um, please follow uh, Professor Bello on Instagram and on YouTube so that you can always be in tune with what she's doing. Again, once you follow her on Instagram, the link tree um, no, uh, connect is there. Yes. And you can pick up the cash app and PayPal from there as well. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. The most important thing I hope you leave here remembering, number one, do not allow anyone to make you afraid. Fear is our greatest enemy. No matter what, when anything happens, stop, take deep breaths to get yourself back on track and not, don't let yourself be. Remember, even when somebody points a gun at you, mm -hmm. the first thought to have is, hmm, that gun could fall any minute. Mm -hmm. And when it does, I pick it up. That's right. You must not allow fear to invade you. You must protect yourself. Number two, question everything. With questioning, you build courage. Courageous people can observe and learn from nature. Take the time to meditate, to be alone, to be silent, to be in darkness. Darkness created the light. So don't be afraid of dark. It's not by chance that us, darkest people, were the first people to walk on this earth. Learn to know yourself, because if you don't know yourself, you cannot love what you don't know. Mouth is easy. You can say anything while I bleach my skin and do everything to my hair and follow everybody, whatever everybody's saying, I can say, I love myself, I love myself. Oh. But anyone looking at me can see this woman does not love herself. Mm. Mm -hmm. So take the time to speak that which you are convinced of. Take the time to know 
once you know, you can begin to love. We cannot know. We cannot love what we don't know. But remember, fear is your greatest enemy. And that's why they use it all the time. If you don't do that, you go to hell. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hell might be an interesting place to visit. Why not? <laughs> we living in the now already, so. <laughs> okay. What could be any harder than this? <laughs> all right. Well, mommy, again, I can't say thank you enough. Um, my closing remarks and my best um, recall, total recall for today is what you just said. In darkness and in the darkest parts, you'll find the light that is needed, right? To move forward with strength. And as I always say, may time flourish for us all in the best ways that we want them to flourish for for me, I always say not only for myself, but for the future. I always think about the little people, the people that's going to come. And, you know, I expect to come back. So when I come back, I want something solid around. I don't want to come back to, you know, um, because I think this only is saying the same thing. He's on his way back and he's like, where's the foundation? I did a part. Let's, let's build on what our ancestors have left behind for us. I know it may seem hard right now, but it's easy. And so let time flourish. It's muscle building easily. time. Say that again? It is muscle building time. Ashe. When you're Ashe. exercising, it seems very hard. Ashe. Okay, so we have to. We messed Ashe. up, so now we have to train. Ashe. Build up the muscles. Ashe. So we can bring our IET. Ashe. All over the world. Yes. And the universe. Absolutely. To the universe. Yes. To infinity and beyond. Huh. But, Go ahead. Um, yes. Thank yes. you again. Thank Asante you. sana. Merci en pile. Portez-nous bien. On est respect. On est respect. Thank you, Queen Mama. Brother. We definitely appreciate you, always, always. And again, as Ashe said, this is your home. So whatever you have going on, let us know. I don't care what we have going on. We will make time for that. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. very, very much. Take great care. All right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, family, there you have it. So many sound bites, so many punchlines, whatever you want to call it, so many bars. Uh, Mama Baina came in with, it's a lot to, to, to process because she dropped us with so much wisdom, not just information and resources, but the wisdom behind it. So I plea, I really do encourage everybody to go and watch the replay of this video, save it on, on YouTube or on Facebook, wherever you at, save it so you can refer to it back in the future if you want to go back and rewatch it because she dropped a lot of gems in here tonight. And um, share it with a friend, please share, share the information and the wisdom with a friend. We want to enlighten our people and, and uplift our people and educate our people so we can get stronger and more powerful. And we know that Haiti is one of the most powerful spiritual resources that we have when it comes to African revolution. And they also doing everything to reverse the effects and, you know, undermine the history and the story of our Aish and uh, people, you know, so um, let's do our part and, and s set the record straight. You know what I'm saying? We bring in the, the elder, Mama Baina Bello, and um, please support. Keisha shared the link again. Please make sure y'all go donate. Give her the cash out, whatever you got, give it. Make sure you donate to the soup. And uh, we definitely look forward to, you know, having her back on the platform again. Thank you once again, uh, Marcia. And, um, yeah, I guess we're going to go right to close the comments now. I want to hear it here. I want to get my little brownie points because I usually close out with an Aishan uh, proverb, an African Aishan proverb. That's what I usually close out with. And it's one of my favorite proverbs that I always say is true courage is knowing how to suffer. You know, and um, it's, it's, it's really important to me. I break it down, but I'll say again, like to me, it's just teaching about sacrifice. You know, like even uh, mama just said, like, who says you're going to go to hell or you're going to, you know, with the fear, they try to say you go into hell. Well, look, if I got to go to hell to bring heaven for our people, 
then who said hell is a bad place? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm willing to go to hell and back. You know, so uh, true courage is knowing how to how to suffer, how to sacrifice. If we're gonna suffer, we're gonna suffer so that the next generation and our people are set up in a better place. We're not gonna suffer and sit in it and complain and sit on a couch and be armchair revolutionaries. We're gonna be boots on the ground, real people. That's about results. So um, true courage is knowing how to suffer. And uh, Sister Marcia, I'll let you close out with your with your closing comments so we can get out of here. I've already said all that I could say for tonight. Um, I've learned so much. Again, I am honored to sit at Mama's footsteps and and learn from her. Learn to, you know, be myself as much as possible. And my rituals are my rituals, and no one can determine them for me. Um, you know, and no one can determine them for you as long as you're claiming your divine self however you see yourself to be um may time flourish people i'm off to jamaica um i hope you all a very wonderful 2023 if i don't see you again um mama baino safe travels to all the places you're going for the rest of this year and in 2023 i inspire to link up with you again so that we could continue doing some great works so um Independent soup on its way. Oh, I got to right. fix my own mouth. <laughs> That's gotta what we all have mouth. to do every day. We have to check out what's coming out of our mouth. Yes. Yeah. Ashe. Uh, take great care, everyone. Sister right. Keisha. Yes, family. Again, we appreciate all of you joining us every week, 8 to 10 p.m. It goes down right here on the Brooklyn Bridge. Tell someone to tell someone to tell someone. This is the community drum, the circle. And Sister Marcia says travels to you. Get the book, Sheroes of the Haitian Revolution. You see it right there well, on the screen. We all got to check out Flunce's page. Like he has so many great books yes. on IET, yes. the revolution, the Sheroes, the heroes, all of these, um, the illustrations, you know, looking at ourselves. Oh, those are so beautiful. So I'll share that link with you so that you could um, know that, Sister Keisha, and share on your platform. And look at this young picture we got here. Who is this right here? Who is that? No. <laughs> look at that person. No, you look, you, you ain't age a day. You look exactly the same. Thank you. They say black don't crack. Black don't crack. Absolutely not. It just gets better. Thank you. Yes, indeed, and enjoy yourself as well, Sister Marcia, while you're in Jam Rock. Um, and Professor Bellows, safe travels to you as well. Um, I can't wait for you to get back so I can see the videos that you post so I can learn some more. Um, definitely, 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 again, appreciate you. And all of you for tuning in. I think Brother Crush409, he says, her words of wisdom have given him chills. Mm -hmm. So... So again, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. We appreciate you. Y'all keep it black always. Good night and be safe out here. Till next time. Be out, y'all.